guys, welcome to the Spoonie channel where we are unfiltered, unafraid, and pain recognizes pain. So, today is Monday, Friday, Friday the 15th. Um, we had something incredibly, incredibly scary happen, especially if you have a four-legged or multiple four-legged members of your family that just are that, are members of your family and you love with every fiber of your being. And I kind of wanted to tell you a story about what happened and that way you can maybe recognize some signs in your animal and some things that we learned to help us figure out what was going on with him. And I really, really wanted to share it with you because if I can help anybody from going through this, anybody, then I will. Um, on Friday, I had an EMG, a doctor's appointment. It was going to be a long, painful doctor's appointment. So it was a 1.30 appointment. So I got up and Bo, our little corgi, who I'll put a picture in, um, he got up with me and he, you know, pups around. That's what we call it. He just does his little thing. He follows me from room to room as I get ready. I like to do a lot of getting ready and sitting, getting ready and sitting. So he'll go with me to get ready and then he'll come and he'll sit in my lap and everything was was fine he was acting just like himself he would go out he would come in he was running around so i got myself ready and i went to the to the doctors now i went to the doctors at 1 30 my husband was coming home at noon so there wasn't much time that he was alone my husband came home while i was at the doctor's appointment and he said Bo was you know fine too they were running around he fed him a little bit um, we didn't see anything going on. Now, we also weren't looking for signs, but he looked and acted just like Bo. He's seven years old. He, we call him middle-aged because he runs around like a puppy for a little bit, and then he's like, whew, all right, guys, I'm tired. Whew. Let's take a break on that. He's, he's a middle-aged man. So we came home, we snuggled on the couch together, and my body shuts down like at 7.30, 8 o'clock. By 7.30, 8 o'clock, it's like, nope, we're done, let's go. So while we were laying in the, the living room, Bo was on top of my husband. And if you know anything about corgis, they love to lay on their backs. Love, love, love it. So he was laying on his back and he had let his his head fall kind of into my husband's arm and he was just laying there and the thing about it is when Bo gets tired and he wants to lay somewhere he will not let you move him he is so stubborn he's like uh-uh I'm comfortable y'all leave me alone like that's his attitude it's always been his attitude we think it's funny um so when he we went to pick him up and we used the P word, P-O-T-T-Y, because that's what we say to go outside. He didn't jump up. And usually that's like his jump up. So we're like, okay, he must really be tired. And my husband went and picked his head up and kind of moved it to his chest. And he was still just laying there. And I'm rubbing his head and he's not really responding. His eyes are open. He's blinking, but he's not really responding well. And once again, in our minds, we're like, he's just so tired, you know, because at that point you don't think something's wrong. And that's what I'm trying to say. It's just one little thing that's off. You're like, man, he's super tired today. So my husband started playing with his feet because when Bo was a puppy down here in Florida we have sand spurs and they're basically like this big around and just spikes and we knew that we were going to have to dig them out of his paws because you just can't avoid them down here. So when Bo was a puppy he hated having his feet touched so my husband would sit and gently play in his feet to get him used to it. Now as an adult he lets us do it but he does not like it and he lets us know it. So my husband was playing in his feet to see if he could get a reaction, and he still wasn't reacting. And we're like, what is going on? Why is he so tired? 
So at that point, we're like, okay, well, we'll let him go to the bathroom and then he'll come in the bedroom with me because that's usually what he does. My husband will stay up for a little bit longer and I go and I lay down because my body is like, lay down. And we let Bo go outside. And my husband said, as he walked outside, he looked a little stiff and was a little bit woozy, but he's like, he usually is stiff and walks a little bit like a middle-aged man. And this is where things get really scary. And, and once again, I'm telling you this because these little things we thought were just normal. He's a little groggy getting up. He's just a little extra tired tonight. But they were things that should have been tip-offs, you know, when, when it was so exaggerated, when his tiredness was so exaggerated. And I remember going to the bedroom and I had taken my clothes off, getting ready to get into bed, getting into my pajamas, and my husband yelled, there's something wrong with Bo. Now, I don't move quickly, people, at all. But as quickly as I could, I threw on my clothes and I walked out into the living room to see my husband carrying our dog back into the house because his legs didn't work. What my husband says he saw when he went outside after the dog was he kind of did stuff in the garage and then he looked over and the dog was standing there with his legs splayed, like his back legs out really far and his front legs forward really far and he was just not moving. Just he couldn't move. He was frozen. And my husband went over to try to talk to him and he just, he wasn't acknowledging my husband. He wasn't moving. So my husband scooped him up and brought him in. And when I saw him, I was standing in front of him feeling just the, the, the most panic that I felt. And I don't know how long. I mean, you have to understand that this is my buddy. I'm home alone a lot. And this is my best friend. He just, he does so much for me and he's such a part of the family. I can't. So he wasn't, you know, I was trying to snap. I was trying to get his attention. I was trying to do something to see if he could focus and he couldn't. So we went and laid him down on the bed. Both of us by this time are crying, you know? My husband's not too manly to admit it. He was in tears. This dog is a member of our family. We laid him down. As we laid him down on the bed, I noticed that he had a little dribble of pee. Almost, I don't know that he lost control of his bladder, but I think what was in his urethra just kind of came out. And we were petting him and we were, we didn't know what to do for him, you know? I would love to be able to rush my dog to an emergency room. I would love that. I would sell everything that I have to keep that dog with me. But we're waiting for Social Security. We are on a tight budget. We just don't have that money. And I can't and cry about it. I can't, I can't sit here and cry about it because it is what it is. But just know that I would do anything. I would do anything. So we called my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law actually worked as a vet tech most of her life. She went to Purdue um, for veterinary science and we called her and we said, this is what's going on. We explained everything. We explained his dizziness, his lack of attention, his immobility, everything that we possibly could. And this is why I wanted to also make the video because the first thing she said is, this might be diabetic related. The first thing we need to rule out is that it's a diabetic issue. So she said, go get a tablespoon of either K-Row syrup if you have it, if you don't have it, honey, because most people have honey in their house. She said, give him a tablespoon of whichever one you have and then five minutes because that will get into their bloodstream and if it is a diabetic issue, which if it is, it's something that you have to address very quickly. Major damage can be done if it's not addressed quickly. So if you have honey or Kara syrup in your house and your dog is acting like this, just give him a tablespoon just to be sure because it could be diabetic related. We gave him the, the syrup and I 
started to feel a little bit better because he did lick it off of my my fingers but then nothing he just went back to laying on the bed out of it not really being able to see us not really responding to us it wasn't diabetic so she then said it's a stroke I hate I hate to tell you this but it's a stroke and what you need to do is just keep an eye on him and monitor how he's doing so my husband and I my husband took the dog because we had a bulldog and when I came home one day on my lunch break our bulldog had had an aneurysm and I found him and it was scarring so my husband said lay down because we might have to take shifts I'm going to take him into the the living room with me he laid him on his lap so that he could take care of him he's like you go lay down and I'll watch him right now if you don't think that I was in the bedroom googling every terrible thing that could happen you are dead wrong because I was and that's not the best thing to do honestly it will just send your mind into a terror my husband was talking to his sister he was doing his own research and we learned that it can take 72 hours for your dog to recover from a stroke so we built a little blanket area um, a, not, sorry, not a blanket, a towel. We built up like three layers of towels and put a pillow down at the end of the bed so that if he did lose control of, you know, his, his bowels and things, he was on towels. And then we just spent the night monitoring him, making sure that he was still there. I would lay my hand on his ribs so that I could feel him breathe. My husband would put his hand in front of his nose to make sure that he was breathing. I would fill a little saucer full of water and bring it to him and put it under his nose just so that if I could get him to lap a couple sips of water, it was getting into his system. And we did that. And the next morning when, you know, we all got up, he wasn't himself. He still acted like a drunk baby. And I know that sounds funny, but that is the best description I could give you. It was like he couldn't, he didn't really have his balance, but he was responding to visual cues. He was walking and using his legs. So the next day we coddled him. We brought his food to him. We brought his water to him. We watched as he got some stability back. We watched as he got some of his cognitive skills back. And as the next two days, this is the third day, this is Monday, he had the stroke on Friday. He's now running around, he's eating regularly, he's, you know, talking and barking, he's going in and out of the doors. It's almost like it never happened, but it did. And now there's always the fear that it's going to happen again. And it is a horrific thing to go through. So watch your animals. Watch your pets. I know it's easy because we did it to say, oh, he's a little extra tired tonight. Or, oh, look at him. He's being so goofy. But these are real things that I know that we need to pay attention to more. And if you pay attention to them and you see them and you know what happened to us maybe maybe it can help you and maybe you won't have to go through that fear because it is terrible so i hope that this helps you i hope that you're watching your animals closely closer than we did and love and health to all of your fur babies because they are special they are so so special they give us things they give us this love and this enjoy 
this like joy to see you and just all this amazing things that it's our responsibility to protect them and to make sure that we are watching and making sure they're as healthy as they can be. So thank you guys. I love you. As always, pain recognizes pain and I see you guys.